All right, what's going on everybody? So in this video, we're gonna continue on this series of uh, paperwork for basically transport. And in this one, we're gonna cover a BOL, bill of lading, shipping papers, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, you'll hear it called several things, but this is generally termed as the BOL. And uh, you're gonna get all kinds of different styles of this. You'll have your own, uh, there's generic that you just fill, you know, basically with an ink pen, draw on the, you know, fill in the blank but they all pretty much establish the same thing. There's, there's certain things that need to be on there and there's specific things that you're gonna look for uh, whenever you're filling one out. On this one, for example, this actually correlates with the Raycon that I showed. This is actually the same load. Now there's a couple of things that I wrote on here and uh, one is that the address, uh, being that whenever I called ahead, uh, which I always suggest you do, uh, call ahead for shipment and delivery. It, it really gets everybody on the same page and lets you know if there's going to be a hiccup or something you need to adjust for. What it did is I found out that the address that was on the bill of lading wasn't the actual physical address of where I was going. So I had to adjust that, notated that on here. I, anything that happens with this load, put it on the bill of lading. You can draw all over this thing if you want to. It does not matter. Don't let anybody tell you you can't. This is your proof of delivery and anything that happens within a load, you're going to need to document that. Uh, not only document anything, you know, that, that physically changes as far as uh, the info that's that's on here, but also things that go on with the load. Uh, let's say the, the forklift stabbed something while they were loading you up. Put that on here. Take pictures. Pictures are huge. Pictures are everything when it comes down to, to proving yourself from this piece of paper. So once again, uh, same thing that you're gonna be looking for on any on any style bill of lading, you're gonna wanna look for the shipment ID or the, the bill of lading number. It's going to need to match in some aspect the number that's on your rate confirmation. You're gonna wanna look at the shipper and the receiver on here, make sure that they're exactly the same as the rate con. And a lot of this matters when it comes down to getting paid or needing further payment as far as, uh, let's say like the address changed on this. It didn't match what was on the rate con. That what it, technically, this, that, that somewhat nulls this entire contract because it is not what was on the rate confirmation. It's not the contract I signed for this loan. So once th when things start changing, you need to get on the phone with the brokerage, correct anything. Some stuff might be minor. Uh, with this address change on here, it actually ended up being closer than it would have been if I went to the actual address that was listed. So I didn't really pursue anything with that. If it would have been farther, they would have needed to add more money to the Raycon. Of course, I'm not gonna ask them to take any away because it was closer, but you know, you kind of play that by ear. Uh, another thing that needs to be on here is your company name. On, and I'll, I'll kind of put a notation on this. I do know that, especially with freight, uh, you haul a lot of, uh, almost everything you haul, you're getting the BOL from the shipper, okay? And some of that stuff, it's, it's already pre-made. Uh, it's got the carrier that was supposed to have hauled it uh, in your spot. You need to have notated on there just for transport reasons, and that will essentially come down to uh, inspection, anything like that anybody with blinking lights behind you, <laughs> you need to have on there somewhere, even if you write it in with an ink pen, your company name, your truck number, trailer number. That needs to be on there. Another thing you wanna look for is the commodity. Make sure the commodity matches. It is what you're supposed to be picking up. If, Like for vehicles, if VINs are different, you're gonna to wanna to call and, and confirm something with that, whether it be through the receiver, the shipper, the broker, you're gonna to wanna to call somebody and figure out what's going on. So again, make sure that all that's on there. If there's any dimensions, make sure they're on there. Make sure they're accurate. Uh, make sure the weights are somewhat accurate. I know a lot of these are ballpark, but just make, make sure they're accurate. Now, usually on a bill of lading, there's gonna be somewhat of a big blank area for you to write down. It, it, that, that's what it's for. I mean, it, it's to notate things and I fill it up. If I go to inspect something and it's raining or it's covered in snow or it's so dirty you can't even see down to it, you know, down to the paint, I'm not just gonna call that good. I'm gonna notate that on there and I'm gonna take pictures, as many pictures as I can. And if I see any trouble areas, I'm gonna take a picture of the trouble areas. It doesn't matter if it is noticeably, if it looks weird, snap a picture of it. It really takes no time. You're already looking at it, but it can save you a claim 
down the road at the receiver. I've had, it, I've had it happen multiple times. This is CYA Central right here, this, this bill of lading right here, and I'll get into another reason why the pictures correlate to that uh, on, on my bill of lading right here. Make sure you get as many signatures if you can. Don't leave one blank. If you're picking up somewhere and the gate guard or the security office, let's say that's who you gotta go through to get out, they, don't, they refuse to sign, they don't wanna sign on that. Always put down, I always put down RTS, refuse to sign and I date it. I never leave anything blank. And then sometimes I'll put on their gate guard security, you know, whatever, if it's an auction, you know, like Mannheim security, whatever. We'll take, for example, my bill of lading and I'll actually put this on the screen so we can work through it here. Obviously I'm gonna cover up my phone number and my email because I use both of those strictly for business. I don't need that being bombed with questions or anything like that, but got a spot for the bill of lading number. I'm always going to make that match the load ID or whatever from whichever brokerage or, or customer that I got. I uh, always put my truck number, the date, and then I've got three marked down here. That's really for me uh, at home for filing these. If it was an invoice, if I need to invoice this, if it was cash, COD, uh, or check, COD. Now I have a lot of things on here and I actually kind of grabbed this from some other BOLs that I've seen in the past here. And, and of course my bill of lading is set up now, it's structured for vehicles. That's why it, it's got the inspection sheet right in the middle of it for up to four vehicles at once. Of course, you're always gonna have to pick up and deliver to company, company, address, city, state, you know, and then phone numbers or contacts if you wanna throw those in there, I usually don't. Um, then I've got down here somewhat of a disclaimer. Automobiles are designed for road use and may acquire small scratches, scuffs, dents, or abrasions. Load miser ink as the carrier cannot be liable for minor damage of this nature, which is considered to be the result of natural wear and tear. The inspection represents a general overall condition and is not all inclusive. Okay, now what this means, it doesn't mean that I can just basically grab any car and get it there and be like, well, you know, that's wear and tear, whatever. No, when I do my inspections and a lot of time, I, I do not have time to sit there and, and check off or, I mean, I'll, I'll snap them in pictures, but I don't have time to sit there on my little inspection sheet and mark every little rock peg, every little swirl or scratch. I don't have time to do that. Those will be picked up in pictures or they can just be expected. I mean, it's a 15 year old car, you know, I mean, it's gonna have some rock pecs on the bumper and the hood. That's a generality of just anything like that, you know, rust, rock chips on the outside of the fenders and all that, you know, it's just like, th this is just natural stuff, okay? What I mark on these inspection forms is major damage, big gouges, chips down to metal, uh, cracks, breaks, dents, that's what I mark on here. Everything else will be scooped up in pictures. And, and when I go through here, all, all I do is mark it. I don't sit here and I, I, don't, I don't do a big detailed thing because that's what my photos are for. Everything on here, you'll need to, be, you'll need to see the pictures. If you got a question about it, ask me for the pictures. I keep those as long as I keep this paperwork. And it has come in handy several times. Another thing down here that I've got is special instructions observations. Now on mine, this is where I will put it, thunderstorm covered in snow uh dirty covered in mud something like that i will always put something on here one of the worst things is getting like a, a a dark vehicle and it has just rained now this thing is littered with little you know tiny droplets of water all over it it's so hard to pick up tiny scratches it's it's super hard to pick up a lot of things when the car is covered in water so then i will notate that on this i still pop pictures but i'll notate that on here to where if anything was underneath that and I couldn't see it, as long as it's not super fresh and obvious that it happened while I had it, there's no way they can gig me for that. Third party billing under here, another, another part under here is third party billing. Now this is where I'll put the brokerage. If this isn't a direct customer, I'll put the name of the brokerage down here, city and state. That's for my, that's also again for my recording info. It's easy to, to line up these bills of lading and, and you know, whenever I've got them in the outstanding folder and I'm waiting on payment, it's easy to see, you know, where this load, who this load came through. Now, another disclaimer down here. Now this is important as well as the one at the very bottom. The owner's or authorized agent's signature at origin is also for the following release. Okay. This will authorize the carrier to drive vehicle at origin or at destination between the points of loading, unloading and the points of pickup and delivery. Now on this part, I'll stop right there. I have been grilled to death by people whenever I'm there to deliver a car, especially a brand new one. When I picked it up, it had four miles on it. When I dropped it off, it had five or six. You, you know that a lot of times you're not, park, you're not parking in the dealership. You're out on the road. I mean, it, and then especially like at the auctions when you pick up, you know, that, that could be a mile deep into the auction. 
And then you gotta you gotta drive that all the way back and then come through and then you know if you are delivering to a dealership and you gotta park out on a highway or something like that and then grab an access road and all that and get in. It's not hard to scoop up an extra mile or two on a vehicle. This kind of covers your butt on that. Because I, I have actually been accused of joyriding in a vehicle that had two extra miles on it from where I picked it up. I don't joyride. I, I have a vehicle if I need it. It's attached to my trailer. I got to just drive. It's a lot easier to drop my trailer than to unstrap a car, pull the ramps out, and get it off of there. I mean, it's, it happens. Like I said, this, this bill of lading is the CYA of your, of your career right here. As well as, as as well as photos. Moving on to the end here, um, I've reviewed and inspected my car with no damages except as noted above and thereby release any further claims. Okay, this is why you want to go over what you find with the company or the especially residential, the, the person that you pick a vehicle up from. They're going to confirm what you just said. A lot of times they just take your word for what you found, but they're going to confirm that this is how you pick the vehicle up and that's going to be the end of it. And they're going to sign off on that right underneath that stating it, that, that's why it can't get to the dealership and they find a big scratch down the side that was on the bill of lading. And then the person that you picked it up from is going to try to say, hell, that wasn't there. You know, it's because a lot of times these, these guys will buy this stuff off of like smart auctions and stuff like that. They won't physically see the vehicle and vehicles typically look a lot better in pictures than they do in person. So this is why this is important. You are basically having them sign a waiver that everything you found was there before you got it. Okay. Now you're responsible for the transport side of it. Anything that happens in transport, you're responsible for, but you definitely want to have a starting point, And that is that right there. Once you get to your delivery and you, you have the car, you know, you drop it off. A lot of guys, especially major dealerships, they're just going to sign your paperwork and walk off. It is very important that people read this and you would need to have them read this. And I do. Down here at the bottom, this is the biggest CYA on this, okay? Please inspect vehicles at time of delivery and report and record any damages to our driver. Company will not honor claims made after delivery inspection. When they sign this paper, I'm free and clear. There's not gonna be four or five days, two weeks later, oh, there's a dent on here that we didn't see when your driver dropped it off. You know, and now, now they're gonna try to make you pony up for that. No, that's it. If they don't want to come look at this car, they're receiving it as is. Now, if something did happen, it would behoove you, you know, as, as, as a driver, as a carrier, as a business owner to just own up to that. Let them know that up front. A lot of times you can work it out with just cash in hand, the difference of what the damage would have been. This right here is one of the biggest risks of car hauling. That is you drop it off somewhere. They've got the guys there at the, at the shop. There's going to be four or five people in it before they actually pull it in and really, really look at it. Anything could happen to that car while those guys were doing all that. This is so that anything that does happen doesn't fall on you. And that's it, guys. That's, that's it for the bill of lading. It's, it's really that simple. It's super straightforward, but you do need to pay attention to what is on there and you need to document everything. Document, take photos. That's not just for cars. That's for everything. So I hope this helped you out. We're going to move on next to invoices. If you didn't see already the Raycon video, I'll go ahead and link that up here. And uh, that's it, guys. We'll see you next time.